mass energy equivalence. Oops, this is the famous equation E equals mc squared from Albert Einstein. E is energy in joules, m is mass in kilograms, and c is the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So e equals mc squared, what does it mean? It says that energy and mass are equivalent. They're equal to each other. Energy equals mass times something. Okay? Um, an object with more energy has more mass. An object with more mass has more energy. Okay? Um, so if you stretch a spring and give it 10 joules of energy, you're gonna, it's going to have more mass. It's going to be heavier. Um, when you gave it energy, you gave it mass because mass and energy are equivalent, um, which is crazy to think about. Just a, a, the same spring, the same amount of atoms, the same amount of stuff is going to be heavier if it has more energy. Um, but you're never going to be able to measure it. Um, the amount it gets heavier is tiny because the energy is the mass is equal to energy divided by the speed of light squared. That's dividing by a really big number. Um, so if we gave 10 joules of energy, that's uh, 0 0.00, I lost count of the zeros, one kilogram, okay? It's a tiny amount of kilograms for each joule of energy. Conservation of mass energy. You can convert from mass to energy or energy to mass, but the combined, the total mass energy has to remain the same, okay? Um, so it's kind of a conservation of mass and conservation of energy all put together. So nuclear power, how does it work? Um, let's say, I know there's a lot of numbers there, but there's nothing too complicated here. Um, one uranium atom has a mass of 3.92 times 10 to the minus, these are all times 10 to the minus 25. Um, and we split it into, into two, into krypton and barium and two neutrons, okay? Um, the combined mass of the krypton and the barium and the two neutrons, I forgot to write that, but and the two neutrons is 3.90 times 10 to the minus 25. So I started with 3.92 and I end with 3.90. Um, so where did that 0.02 times 10 to the negative 25 kilogram go? Um, is there like a missing particle somewhere? There's not. Um, it became energy. We, we had more mass before and less mass after. It, it got uh, shot out as, as energy. Um, it was released as energy via E equals mc squared, okay? And I know that it's only 0 0.02 times 10 to the negative 25 kilograms, but that's for each atom of uranium. Um, so we're going to have lots of kilograms getting converted into uh, energy. Can we make matter? Yes, uh, with enough energy, we can create protons, neutrons, and electrons in the laboratory using E equals mc squared. Uh, matter is always made in pairs. Um, whenever we create an electron, we also create an anti-electron, not a proton. Um, an anti-electron is not a proton. It's an electron. It's like an electron, but it's positive. Okay? So like a proton's in the nucleus. Um, an anti-electron goes on the outside, like an electron, but it's positive. Okay? So we can create matter. We can literally create protons, neutrons, atoms in, in the lab out of nothing. I mean, not energy is not nothing, but we can take that energy and turn it into stuff. Um, antimatter is, is some crazy stuff. Um, you can have an anti-electron orbiting an anti-proton, and then you have anti-hydrogen, right? And then you can have two anti-hydrogens and an anti-oxygen, and you'll have anti-H2O. Antimatter behaves just like ordinary matter. So anti-H2O would taste just like regular water, except for one thing, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Antimatter behaves just like ordinary matter. Opposite charge to attract, like charge to repel, everything's exactly the same. And a universe composed of antimatter would be indistingu indistinguishable from ours. It would look exactly like ours. But this universe couldn't coexist with ours because when antimatter comes into contact with matter, they annihilate and become pure energy via E equals mc squared, okay? Um, so nowhere in the universe do we see these sections of antimatter, because if there was any border between matter and antimatter, there'd be constant, like, explosions, um, and we don't see these explosions, um, aside from uh, stars and nova and supernova. There's some antimatter in there, but only a little bit. Um, but there's no, like, antimatter universe out there, because there would be a boundary between the matter and the antimatter, and we would see constant annihilation. Okay, so that's about it for antimatter.